Well, hello, VC. Uh, how would you like to see some obscure 70s hard rock? Because that's what I'm going to show you today. These are all albums by bands who kind of slipped under the radar a bit. I've no doubt they've all been shown on the VC at some point, but I'm not sure I've seen them. And uh, they're all great albums um, by bands who deserve better at the time and deserve rediscovery now. So uh, I'm going to do these in date order starting in 1971. Got half a dozen or so here. And the first one is a band that's put together by Mark Stein, the uh, organ player from Vanilla Fudge. And it pretty much left the sort of psychedelic feel of uh, Vanilla Fudge's records behind on this one. And it's Boomerang and their self-titled album, which uh, has a sleeve that doesn't give an awful lot away about the band on the front. Uh, you'd have to know what you're looking for in the record store for this one. It does have the band name on the back and a picture of the band, including guitar player who I think was 16 at the time they recorded this. And he wails on this. Great player. Uh, the whole thing is basically bluesy hard rock with, as you'd expect, a ton of swirling Hammond organ. That guitar player doing his bit on here. And a vocalist who sounds like a cross between David Coverdale and Chris Robinson from the Black Crows. It's a really, really good listen, this. Best track is probably the opening track, Duke It, which is just wailing bluesy hard rock um, it's a real statement of intent like I say the vocals are very David Coverdale and the whole album in fact has that real kind of early white snake feel the what in our house is lovingly lovingly referred to as fat white snake so um, the white snake that featured Mickey Moody and Bernie Marsden before David Cover Coverdale decided to surround himself with male models to uh, Push his career on MTV. So it's a good, credible hard rock album, this. Like I say, there's elements of the Black Crows on here as well, particularly on, um, was it, um, the track Hard Times, which has a fair bit of acoustic guitar and organ, slightly cosmic country feel to it, and that's a Chris Robinson style vocal on there. And a really good backwards guitar solo on that one as well. Uh, elsewhere, second track on side two, Brothers Coming Home if I'm understanding the lyrics correctly, is a, a song about guys coming back from the Vietnam War. And uh, that's a real sensitive, sort of orchestrated piano ballad. Uh, just slightly different mood for the album, but this is really worth investigating. I don't think you see this one too often. Um, I've only ever seen this, this actual copy out in the wild. Got this quite a number of years ago. I'm glad I picked it up when I did, because... Um, I had no idea what it was, but just gave it a chance. So, yeah, that's Boomerang from 1971. Check it out. And also from 1971, this is now my picked up at uh, Amoeba in San Francisco a few years back. Not sure I knew what it was, but it looked interesting and I've really enjoyed it ever since. And it's Shotgun Limited's uh, self titled album on the Prophesy label. As you can see, it's a uh, Promotional copy. And if I get the, the record out, you'll see. Um, there you go. White label promo. And this is a, a really enjoyable record. Um, bit of um, seam split on the top of the record there. But you know, I can live with that. You know, I'd sooner have an album where the sleeves are a bit damaged than not have the album at all. And I love that. That picture of the. Uh, Excuse me, that's my cat making the noise, not me. The band with their girlfriends all uh, up the duff outside the church waiting for the shotgun wedding. So uh, what's this like? Well, I think it's a lot more out of California, but it sounds like a very much a, a southern rock album. But it's like a southern take on Uriah Heep, but with some hangover from 60s psychedelia and some prog ambition as well. And as such, it's a really interesting listen. Uh, the first track, Bad Road, opens up with a blast of horns and uh, it kind of has the feel of a, a southern rock take on Al Green's Ride Sally Ride. Uh, so that's, that's not a bad way to start the album. 
I mean, as it progresses, the southern feel continues, but there's definitely that Uriah Heap sort of element bubbling under here as well. The vocalist sounds at times a bit like John Lawton, uh, one time Heap vocalist. There's some big sort of Heap type backing harmonies as well, which always good in my book. A ton of bubbling organ, some great um, wah wah guitar. Superb listen. There's a sort of surprising sax solo on Remedy for a Hazy Day, but that works really nicely. You know, the vocal on that one sounds a bit like Danny Joe Brown from Molly Hatchet, and the track overall has a bit of a Bartman Turner Overdrive feel. So you kind of get a feel for what this, this is like. It's, it's good quality 70s hard rock. Um, the final track on side one, I Don't Mind, uh, it's got a sort of airy vocal production, ton of strings on there, sort of these ethereal backing vocals, and a slightly psychedelic vibe to it, which I, I rather like. And of course, the Hammond organ is present all the time. There's a bit of a funk influence on here as well. I'm not saying that they're you know, going to rival James Brown, but they get a bit of a groove going on some of these songs as well. So this is definitely one worth tracking down. I can thoroughly thoroughly recommend this really good southern style hard rock with heap style harmonies tons of hammond and they're not afraid to have a bit of sax or brass on there when it's needed so yeah worth checking out shotgun limited and another one from 1971 what a year for rock that was is this band out of miami peace and quiet and this album sleeve is probably the most trashed looking ring worn one in my collection. So you can probably barely make the picture out there, but I'll perhaps put a picture of the cover up on the corner and see what see what it should look like. You know, someone's tried to get the uh the timing strip off the front of that at some point and done a terrible job of it. And there's a name written on it, ring wear, it looks a mess, but what a great album. I picked this up on a whim. It was Dirt cheap because of the condition. Knew nothing about it, but this is such a good album. There are the guys in the band on the back looking suitably moody and hirsute. And uh, I guess this opens up with a track called You Can Wait Till Tomorrow, and it's it's like Deep Purple with a, a gruffer vocalist. Uh, tons of Hammond organ. Um, I suppose... Vocally, it's similar to um, Spiritual Beggars, if you're familiar with that band out of Sweden, sort of a, a modern rock band in the same sort of style. A uh, bit of Grand Majors in there as well. And uh, I guess the vocalist reminds of David Byron from Your Eye Heap. So we've had two different Heap vocalists referenced here. Um, but on this one, it's more like David Byron. The second track, Margot's Leaving Song, is a, a little bit different. It's a powerful ballad. Um, but I suppose what makes it stand out is that um, Jerry Goodman of The Flock plays violin on that track and just takes it to another level. It's it's kind of reminiscent of Blood Rock, Grand Funk, Uriah Heap, that kind of thing. The album as a whole, again, has a bit of a sudden vibe to it, um, particularly on the final track, Looney Tunes, which is an instrumental track, which just builds and builds and it's very Leonard Skinnerd in its kind of way that the jam climaxes um, so there's a fair bit of ambition here again a southern feel and some really good Hammond driven hard rock with wailing lead guitar so peace and quiet track down a copy and see if you can find one of the better sleeves than I managed to get great stuff and then we move on to 1973 and the debut album by Stray Dog. And this album is a party from beginning to end. I can't believe this isn't a better known or a more loved album. There's guys there looking rather formally dressed for this kind of album. But they were signed to um, Emerson, Lake and Palmer's Manticore label. But they bear no relation whatsoever, sound-wise, to Emerson, Lake and Palmer, that's for sure. Like I say, this is just a, 
a party from beginning to end. The first track, Tramp, um, kind of has a church organ intro with hymn-like vocals. Then the singer, Snuffy Walden, kind of shouts out, fasten your seatbelts. And that's it. They're off. And it's just a, a white knuckle ride from that point on. It is party rock. There's elements of Montrose in here. Uh, Van Halen crossed with ZZ Top in places. Some superb guitar playing. Lascivious sort of vocals. Uh, yeah, wailing guitar solos. It's, it's an absolutely fantastic album. A couple of tracks have a real Captain Beyond feel to them. Certainly that opener Tramp does. And the second track, um, Crazy. Same thing, strutting hard rock. Um, with a sort of Captain Beyond, Montrose, Frank Marino feel to it. you really got to check this one out. The second album uh, is decent as well, but this is, this is the best one. It's absolutely great stuff. Um, what other tracks are? Chevrolet. That's a cowbell stonker if ever I heard one, you know. Bit of cowboy and rock music never goes wrong, does it? Absolutely drives along. That's the one that really sounds like crossing ZZ Top and Montrose. Superb. I say bluesy, sort of almost Van Halen moves on here. Um, the only slight misstep is the final track, uh, which is called Rocky Mountain Suite, which is about eight minutes of a slightly um, unplanned jam by the sounds of it. Bit unfocused. Probably not the strongest way to end the album, but apart from that, this never puts a foot, foot wrong. It's a stray dog on a Manticore label. And then from 1974, an album by Three Man Army. Their third album, Three Man Army 2. Don't ask me why, but it is their third album. And uh, this featured a couple of guys, the Curtis Brothers, later known as the Gerbitz Brothers. I guess they anglicised their name for a while there, who were the main guys in Gun, famous for the Race uh, race with the Devil track, which was quite a big hit in the UK uh, at the time. And you don't hear an awful lot talked about this album. I don't know why, because it's an absolute killer album. It really is. Um, it opens with a track called Polecat Woman, which just sounds so much like a heavier version of early Aerosmith. Absolute killer stuff. Slide guitar, wah-wah guitar, really strong vocals. Yeah, just love that track. Great way to start the album. Uh, second track, which is called Today, is a bluesy brooder. Again, with some great vocals. Um, lovely guitar riff, sort of circular guitar riff, which reminds me quite a lot of Dear Prudence by the Beatles, crossed with, I guess, Still Got the Blues by Gary Moore. It's uh, superb track, a bit of an epic with wailing guitar. Um, there's some great drumming on here by Tony Tony Newman. I mean, it's a power trio and you do not feel like you're missing a fourth member of the band, that's for sure. Whether they could pull it off live, I don't know, because um, Adrian Gerbitz plays guitar, organ and sings, so has his work cut out for him. But yeah, superb stuff. There's a track... Um, Final track on the first side, Space is the Place, which um, it's all orchestration and it's real epic balladry. Uh, sounds to me like The Babies um, or like ELO a little bit with the orchestration. And I'm sure I've heard somebody do a cover of that. I'm sure I've got a cover of it in my collection somewhere, but for the life of me, I cannot think who it was. So if you know of a cover of space is a place, let me know in the comments because it's doing my head in trying to work out what it is. Like I say, the drumming on here is fantastic. Some really good twin kick drums. It sounds a bit like, um, almost like you've got Ginger Baker on drums here at times. Um, great orchestrated balladry. I can't say enough good things about this. Some funky hard rock on here as well. Clattering percussion, plenty of Hammond. Little Elements of Captain Beyond on here as well. And I love this album. You definitely want to be checking this one out. Three Man Army.
And next up is a, an album that, if I haven't shown it on the VC before, I really should have done, because I've been crazy about this album for years, and more people need to know about it. And it's uh, Armageddon's One and Done from 1975. And the first thing to say about this album is what great artwork that is. I love the the band logo. I love that sleeve with its post-apocalyptic kind of uh, imagery there. I mean, I guess it's based on the sort of trenches in World War One, and they've all got their great coats on. But on the back, you've got them turned to ash and this kind of, I guess, flash from a nuclear explosion in the background. So that's your artwork. And you're in the sleeve. But what about the music? Well, this was a band put together. It's kind of a bit of a super group, really. It was put together by Keith Ralph, um, one time vocalist of Yardbirds and Renaissance. And it's got Martin Pugh on guitar, who was in Steamhammer. Um, there's a guy, Luis Sinamo, on bass, who was also in Renaissance and Steamhammer and in Coliseum. And then you've got, who is for me, one of the greatest rock drummers and unheralded rock drummers, Bobby Caldwell, battering the kit into submission. I love his playing. He played for Captain Beyond. He played in Johnny Winter's band. And he's on this. And I love his playing. I can't believe he's not better known because he's such a good drummer. Um, musically, uh, well... Vocals. I mean, Keith Ralph tends to get a bit of stick for his vocals generally. He's never been considered a great vocalist, but I think he really suits the material on here. I have no complaints at all. Uh, and like I say, Bobby Caldwell does a great. They all do a great job. Martin Pugh's guitar tones on here are incredible. Um, they go from mellow, beautiful uh, guitar sounds to guitar that almost feels like it could take the top of your head off. Absolutely brutal. This record features a lot of real naggingly insistent riffs. It's not heavy in a way that is just distorted walls of guitar, but it's just that naggingly hypnotic insistent riffs underpinned by this amazing bass playing and drumming. Um, there's a ton of wah-wah guitar on here. Uh, the first track, in fact, um, Buzzard, it sounds like, and I've, I wrote about this on a blog I used to do years ago, but it sounds to me like almost like a bunch of white guys playing their take on a black exploitation soundtrack. It's, it's, it's fantastic. So it's got this real sort of groove to it, but it's hard rock. Absolutely amazing. Um, Silver Tightrope is a sort of mellow, drifting, almost psychedelic track. Um, Paths and Plains and Future Gains gallops along. Great rhythm. Um, a metallic guitar riff. That's the one that really you know, almost parts the top of your head from the rest, rest of your body. Tons of tempo changes. So slight prog progressions. Well, more than slight, because there's a ton of time changes and all sorts on here. Uh, and in fact, the most of side two is taken up by a four part uh, track called Basking in the White of the Midnight Sun, which is in turn sort of hypnotic, strutting, uh, tons of wah wah flexing on there. Uh, Keith Ralph digs out his blues harp and plays some great harmonica on this, sort of dueling with the guitar all the time. And it's relentless. It is such a good album. This is probably one of the greatest rock albums of the 1970s. And it just doesn't seem to get the, the credit it deserves. So you need to check it out. Really, really great stuff. So that's it. Just a half dozen 70s rock albums today. Um, I'll definitely be showing some more because there's so much of this sort of stuff in my collection. But shout out to Cosmic Brian because it's watching his channel made me think I'm not showing enough of these sort of albums. And I know he tends to show a lot of proto metal and early hard rockers and stuff like that. So cheers, Brian, for inspiring me. And um, look forward to all your comments, guys. And if you can think of who wrote that um, or who else covered that three-man army track, um, Space is the Place, do say.
just doing my nutting. All right, take care. See you soon. Bye.